If everything's working, you should have received a large iOS confirmation prompt asking you whether you want to grant the app access to your location. This message is really blunt, so hopefully users take a few moments to read it before continuing. But that prompt is not the only way iOS helps users guard their privacy. If you chose when in use, you'll still get location information while your app's in the background if you enable the background capability. And iOS will notify users that this is happening by making the device status bar blue or partly blue. If you went for always, iOS will wait a few days and ask the user again if they still want to grant permission, just to be fully sure. Assuming everything went well, let's take a look at how we actually range beacons. First, we use a new class called CL Beacon Region, which is used to identify a beacon uniquely. Second, we give that to our CL Location Manager object by calling it Start Monitoring For and Start Ranging Beacons In methods. Once that's done, we sit and wait. As soon as iOS has anything to tell us, it'll do so. Now iBeacons are identified using three pieces of information. A UUID, plus a major number, and a minor number. The first number is that long hexadecimal string you've seen before, which should identify you, or your company, or your store chain, uniquely. The major number is used to subdivide within the UUID. So if you have 10,000 stores in your supermarket chain, you use the same UUID for all of them, but give each one a different major number. That major number must be between 1 and 65,535, which is enough to identify every McDonald's and Starbucks outlet combined. The minor number can, if you wish, be used to subdivide within the major number. For example, if your flagship London store has 12 floors, each of which has 10 departments, you assign each of them a different minor number. So the combination of all three identify the user's precise location. The UUID says you are in an Acme hardware supply store. The major number says you're in the Glasgow branch. And the minor number says you're in the shoe department on the third floor. If you don't need that level of detail, you can skip minor or even major. It's down to you. It's time to put all this into code. So we're going to create a new method called start scanning that contains this kind of code here. We'll say func start scanning. First, make a UUID from a string. This has got to be exactly right, matching a UUID you have in a physical beacon or one you can use a test app for. There's a test number we can use already called, uh, I'll show it to you now. UUID is a UUID with the UUID string. This is an exact number for a known test beacon assigned by Apple. So you got this exactly right. Uh, it's all uppercase, by the way. It's 5A4. BC FCE dash one seven four E dash four BAC dash A eight one four dash zero ninety two E seventy seven F six B seven E five. That is a very long number there, uh, with letters as well. It's hexadecimal, it's very long. At an, a, a known good UUID. Now, please be careful here. Even one tiny error, like if you had an F here rather than an E, that's enough for it not to detect your beacon anymore. So please make sure you get that exactly right, otherwise you'll have problems. Now, making a UUID from a UUID string, you will see, gives us back an optional UUID. So if you wanted to, you could say something like, you know, guard let that else, uh, whatever, return. Um, in this case, though, I think that kind of code isn't helpful. We've hand-typed the UUID. It's exactly right or it's wrong. If it's wrong, I don't want to catch that at runtime. It's a fundamental basic logic error. I would much rather uh, force unwrap that to make my intent clear. This is definitely correct. That's our UUID. We'll now wrap that inside a CL beacon region with a major and minor number. We'll say let beacon region equals a CL beacon region. This takes a proximity UUID plus a major and minor values. I'll use the last option here. Our UUID is a UUID. Our major number I'm going to say is one, two, three. Our minor number I'm going to say is four, five, six. Identifier I'm going to call my beacon like that. A free text string. And now I'm going to ask Core Location to start monitoring for the existence of that beacon and also start ranging it so we can tell how far away it is. So I'll say Location Manager 
dot start monitoring for beacon region. Then location manager dot start ranging beacons in beacon region. So look for the beacons and tell us how far away we are from the beacons. And let's identify a field here. That's just a string to help you identify the beacon in a human readable way. That plus the UUID, major and minor fields go all into a CL beacon region class, which identifies and works with iBeacons. Now finally, we can go up here to this do stuff call here. We know we have permission to read the location and we can monitor and we can range. It's now safe to say call start scanning there. So we start looking for the iBeacon. Now you can, if you want, run the app now, again on a real device, but you'll see it looks literally identical as if we hadn't bothered writing any iBeacon code. But behind the scenes, detection and ranging is happening. We're just not doing anything with it. This app is going to change the label text and view background color to reflect proximity to the beacon we're scanning for. This has been on a single method called update distance, which will use a switch case block and animations in order to make the transition look smooth. Let's write that code first. I'll scroll down and find some space beneath start scanning and say func update with a distance, which is an enum of CL proximity. We'll start our animation block by saying UI view dot animate with duration. We'll do uh, one second. Our animations we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna show either gray, blue, orange, or red background color and change the distance reading text from unknown, far, near, or right here. So we'll say switch distance. If the case is unknown, no idea how far away we are, we'll say self.view.backgroundcolor is dot gray and self.distance reading dot text is unknown. I will copy and paste that a few times. We have distance unknown, we have distance far, we have distance near, and we have distance immediate, i.e. basically touching. Uh, and for unknowns, gray and unknown, good. For far, we're going to say uh, its color is blue and its text will be far. For background color near, we'll say it's gonna be orange and near. And for immediate, we'll say you are red and the text will be right here. Now you see we're getting a warning here. This is a very interesting warning from Xcode. It's telling us that uh, CL proximity might change in the future. And right now, there's no way for our code to handle that. We need a better way of doing that. And realistically, what we want to do is have this unknown default case to specify what should happen if there's an unknown default, what we should do. Now, it's down to us what we should do with this. Uh, in, in this case, I'm tempted to say, actually, uh, for all other cases, let's just say gray is the default and unknown because it's not far, it's not near, it's not immediate, it's something else. And we'll just say, we don't know what it is, we'll just say unknown, it's an unknown value. So to fix this, I'm gonna take out those two lines of code and the case unknown, so we'll have far, near, immediate, and instead put that into a generic default case to catch all other values, including unknown future ones, all in one place. And now the warning will go away because we're catching all cases guaranteed. Now most of this is just choosing the right color, blue, orange, red, and gray, and similar, uh, or the right text like unknown or near. But you'll notice this accepts a CL proximity, which is a type that comes from core location, that's the CL part, and it'll be passed to us by the location manager. So now what we need to do is try and catch the ranging method from CL location manager. We'll be given the array of beacons it found for a given region, which allows for cases when there are multiple beacons transmitting the same UUID. If you receive any beacons from this method, we'll pull out the first one and use its proximity property to call our update distance method and redraw the UI. If there aren't any beacons, we'll just use unknown, which will switch the text back to unknown and make the background color gray. I'll scroll down, find some space and call this thing did range beacons. And inside here, we'll get past an array of CL beacons. And we'll use that to read inside the array for the first item and pass that to our update distance method. 
we'll say if let beacon equals beacons dot first then update with beacon dot proximity else update with dot unknown so we can find any beacons in the array great pass the proximity of the first one to our update distance method otherwise just pass in unknown now it's time to try this thing out i'll press command r to build and run that code on my real iphone again you need a real device you can see unknown on my screen i'm now going to launch an app from the app store uh, which is called locate beacon it lets you simulate beacons including apple's built-in beacon right on your ipad so it will transmit as if it were a hardware beacon of course if you have real beacons please use those otherwise use an iphone or an ipad so you can transmit a simulated beacon straight from there so locate beacon has this example apple beacon already built into it and so i can go to locate beacon i can choose the apple air locate 5a4 uh, device in there that's got a full long uid uh, make sure it has a major my number one two three four five six and then i'll press advertise now and what will happen is you'll see immediately my phone texts it and says right here as i move away from the device away from my ipad it'll get further and further away being well let's find out there we go it's now near if i take my ipad further and further away perhaps behind my screen it's a bit of interference there boom it claims to be far away now like i'm slightly behind the screen yeah it's near and then real up close it should say right here perfect 